Hello, TG, and welcome back to another Get to Know You, a COC interview. I'm Honest Outrage, and with me today, I've got a very special guest for you guys. He's your first core commander. He's the PC guru. He's that hog-riding guy from Canada. It's Mr. TG Blistig. Hey, dude. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good, man. <laughs> nice intro, man. Yeah, you like that? That was awesome. <laughs> I felt like I needed to get like, some big intro for you. You needed a, a big entrance <laughs> to this stage that is TG. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff we've got so good, so... Here. good man good man we've got so much to get through I, I don't even know how long this video is going to be but don't worry guys we've got lots of Stiggs's gameplay for you to watch whilst you're listening to us go on about his history and what he's doing in TG and what he plans to do in the future so lots for you to view whilst this is going on but I really don't even know where to start dude I mean let's let's take it right back to the beginning when you first joined TG you you were in Battlefield what was your what was your first days in TG like over in Battlefield Division? Um, well, let's see. I, uh, I don't know. I was just basically, I was having a blast in Battlefield and, uh, I love that game heroes and I was really good at it, but I didn't, uh, I didn't have anyone to play with. I was just, you know, I'd go into the game and I'd rock, rock everyone, but it was always solo. And, uh, you know, after a while, the, the, as people started playing the beta more, they started overrunning me in, in groups and I decided, you know what, I need some people to play with. So, <laughs> Um, that was when I started seeking out a group of uh, like-minded gamers to oh, play nice. with. Nice, nice drop there. Yeah, I don't know how how you guys did it at the time, but somehow TG got listed or mentioned uh, like right on the main Battlefield Heroes um, website, like on their main main page. Okay. Uh, I think I might have even launched the game at one point, and it said something like, "Hey, clans are recruiting," and TG was like right there. Um, so that's that's basically how I found you guys, and I came in and read read all the stuff about how you've been around since 2004, and I figured, well, something must been be uh, going right here because you know they've been around for a while. Um, you so thought, I need a piece to that action. Yeah, yeah. So I decided to join, and uh, I, I got to say, I guess I should add to that. I mean, prior to joining TG, I'd never been in any other kind of gaming clan other than. Um, an MMO guild, basically. Like uh, I'd been in a lot of big guilds previously, but they were always focused on one game, and uh, it, you know it was a lot different than TG for sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. That they was... were always go on. <clears throat> that was like a World of Warcraft thing, was it? Yeah, World of Warcraft were the biggest ones I was in, but uh, started all the way back in Ultima Online, if you can remember that one. Oh my god, <laughs> <It's> still around. <laughs> I was probably in a playground back then, dude. <laughs> no other TG members will remember. They know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I joined TG and um, right into the Battlefield PC Brigade, and uh, it was great from that day forward. I've, I mean, I've been in TG since, and it's a huge part of my life. And I wouldn't be here still today if I wasn't having a blast every day. Good stuff. And well, I guess we should say most days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get onto your workload later, dude. Don't even worry about that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah. make people understand and sympathize. <laughs> <laughs> so you came into Battlefield PC and you stayed there for quite a long while, but it didn't t it didn't take you too long really to work your way over to the Call of Duty PC Brigade. Uh, no, no, I uh, yeah, I was in. I think I was in Battlefield, and it didn't take me long to go up there. I was. I think I went to one practice in IS before they were. You know, they needed that the squad leader wanted to move over to an ST and they wanted someone to lead the IS and they jumped on me right away after pretty much the first practice. So also. I was, I think, SA and then SL within three practices. <laughs> um, but uh, that always seems to happen to me. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, yeah, so COD at that time, they didn't have a PC brigade. And I don't know if anyone remembers uh, good old Chew It. Yeah, of course we remember Chewy. <laughs> yeah, Chewy. Chewy. Um, so he uh, decided to go over to Call of Duty and start up the PC Brigade fresh, brand new. Um, and I decided at that time to go with him because uh, we were good buddies. And uh, I mean, Battlefield Heroes was in a good good place. So decided to take that challenge on. Excellent. And you came straight into a, an, an SL role, really, in, in an ST squad, almost immediately after your transfer. In, in Call of Duty? Yeah, because yeah. basically it was... Uh, I, I'm sorry, I apologize, I can't remember all the names, but I, I believe there was only three or four of us. And I mean, me and Chewy were the biggest players, but um, it was basically Chewy went into the BGC role right away from day one, and I, I was there to lead the IS squad, the first to open and lead the first squad, basically. Sure. And, 
we got a lot of members and recruits in like really quick. It wasn't hard to get recruits. And, and I, I just did like from there, I learned, I, I don't know. I knew what you need to make a brigade succeed from start. And I just worked my butt off to do that. Like I, um, you know, I, as I filled the IS squad, it didn't take very long to get a few guys in there. I mentored somebody and made him my SA kind of thing. And then I was offered the XO position pretty much right away. And I, I said, like, I, I'm not taking on the XO or CO position. I don't, I don't want any battalion staff positions until we've got like a, a good IS squad with staff and a good ST, maybe even two ST squads with staff before I, I need to even worry about a battalion. So you don't even need battalion staff if you have no squads, right? Yeah, of course. So um, that's what I did. I, I mentored a guy up to SA, and then I, I uh, we had enough members, so I moved over to open up the new ST squad, and the SA became the SL of the IS and continued leading that squad. And, uh, you know, from there I, I started up the ST, and basically I just helped them build up these these squads until they were, they were solid. And uh, from that point I stepped up to battalion staff positions and just guided my staff from there. Definitely. I mean, that's where it really blew up for you, because um, at that point, you know, we just started in 2010 um, and straight away, really early on in that year, in like the January, February, you got promoted to, to XO. But literally 2010 was like it was your year because you went from moving over to a new new brigade, getting this new brigade started with all these squads, getting all these recruits coming in. It was amazing. You got the XO position and that year you went all the way from SL to DO. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally. In in that one year, eh? Yeah, right. Everything. Literally, you went XOCO, BGC, DO, 2010. That was it. Done. You were just like, yeah, bring it on, TG. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. All I got to say is hard work pays off. Definitely. Well, all those efforts you put in, they were definitely recognized and you were definitely rewarded for it. But let's focus on sort of your, your early COC career at the moment, the, the XO and the CO position. How was that for you? I mean, you'd, you'd helped build up this brigade, the PC brigade in Call of Duty. How did the step up to battalion staff go for you? How did you find the XO and the CO positions? Um, honestly, I found them pretty... It, it was kind of a... It was just a rank promotion for me. It wasn't really any different because... Uh, when I transferred to COD PC, the, like right in the gates, when I was the ISSL, I felt like I was battalion staff already, right? Like I was looking sure. at first battalion. I had to build it up from nothing. I had to make sure that the the guys that uh, I was putting in charge of the squads knew what they were doing, which is what battalion staff have to do, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, uh, it was like it was me choosing you know, which guys were going to be the good leaders and then training them and, and, and doing all that stuff. So when I got promoted to XO, it was just like, um, it was same I, old, same old, really. It was like continuation yeah, of what you were doing anyway. Pretty much. Yeah. It's like, okay, now that you've done it, here's kind of your reward for, for all that hard work. And now you're in the, the actual position, which, um, <laughs> clearly, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Clearly outlines what your responsibilities are, you know, which is yeah. what you're doing, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just basically puts your duties on paper. So you have a defined role. But for you, like you say, it was just carrying on as always. It was just continuing to do what you were doing best. Yep. And I mean, <laughs> I was I was first first battalion here in Canada and Chewie's over uh, over in UK. So it's, uh, you know, he was always looking out for second battalion and I was looking out for first battalion. So even though he was BGC and I was an, a, a squad leader, we were a team of two, basically. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much why I moved up so fast. It was just like once I was XO, it wasn't it, there was no question that I was going to be CO because it was just a matter of I didn't want to be CO until I had figured out who was going to be my XO. You know, there was no point in being CO because they do the same thing. Right. Yeah. Unless yeah. unless you have your XO. So. Um, from there I moved up to CO and then I believe, uh, I believe around that time it was, uh, you know, second battalion was doing awesome and Chewie was just like, you know, I've done great work here. It's time for me to take a break. Mm -hmm. I think he, uh, I think he can't remember. I think he went to school some more or maybe got a great job or something like that. But, uh, he, he decided to go on leave. So, uh, next step from there, of course, was brigade commander. Yeah, that was that was the second part of the year. You know, you took on that BG position about half halfway through the year in the July, and and this was kind of the the business end of the year for you because of course you had that BGC position, so the the entire brigade became your responsibility. Obviously, then you were working under Iron Medic, and obviously towards the end of that year is when we had the thing we don't want to talk about too much. But 
we lost a few members that late that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that is, I suppose, where, when things really kicked off for you because um, straight away that DO position became available. You moved in there as the interim overseer, that that interim DO position whilst remaining in the BGC. And a few days later, you got the official promotion and became the DO. And that's really when that's when me and you properly met as well because we knew each other a little bit from Forza over on Tactical Sports. Yeah, yeah. But around that time, um, that, that's when we, we really started to chat and hang out and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, we were we... also, we were both BGCs at the time when I became PC BGC. So we were, uh, I believe that's the case, right? From no. what I recall. No. no. You made me BGC. <laughs> oh my God. See? <laughs> at the time I was CO and, and you took that BGC. You were, you were BGC anyway. You'd been rocking PC Brigade. That DO right, that's... became available. You got the DO. You promoted me to BGC. That's that's why I'll tell you why because I knew such great th- I, I I knew I, I knew you fairly well by then and I knew all the great things that you had done and when I was put into the acting DO position it was, it was just kind of an odd situation because as everybody knows how big the three the three sixty brigade is versus the other two or or was at the time it was massive was yeah it was um, it was massive um, so for me it was like. As you can see, the the short time span when PC just blew up, and I, I escalated up those ranks so fast, and then all of a sudden, this you know thing that we don't want to talk about, mass exodus of of high ranking people left all these positions vacant. Um, it just felt really odd for me, I have to admit, because it was a really quick move up, and I felt like um, you and the other um, upper COC in the 360 brigade who had been you know, there for so much longer than me and running this much bigger brigade than me, it just seemed to me like they would be the more likely candidate to be a DO of Call of Duty at that time. Maybe, but i got to be uh-huh. honest, man, you were an awesome DO. I'm so glad I got to work with you. As well, DO that's the thing, yeah. I mean, it, it it turned out how it did, and there there seemed to be absolutely no hard feelings from anybody. And, uh, yeah, and then from there, it was just great. Like, you were my first choice for BGC, and... Everything uh, everything worked out awesome from there. So Call how, of Duty is gone. So how big of a shock to the system was that? I mean, uh, having the responsibility of this entire division, all of a sudden you probably found yourself looking at the rosters and thinking, oh, wow, what am I going to do with these people? Was that a massive shock to the system? Or did you just take it in your stride? That one was kind of a massive shock, I would say. Um, up and up, All the way up to BGC, it was pretty much, I knew what I was in for, you know? But... Um, I can honestly say that I never really, uh, I guess I got to BGC so fast that I hadn't set my sights any higher, you know? Yeah. And I wasn't, I wasn't really looking at the whole bigger picture of, you know, like I didn't even have a, an Xbox at the time and I wasn't like, I don't play on consoles as much and I, I wasn't really too concerned. You, you guys had a huge brigade. I knew things were going good. So I, I didn't really, I didn't really think about it that much, you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was just like, all the stuff's happening. We need you in this role. You're the guy for it, and you're in it. And now, bam! You have to look at everything. Get on with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it also, I don't know. Um, I don't know if you want to mention that now or talk about it later. But right prior to that um, move to Dio, I also joined the web team. Yep. Um, so I I was all of a sudden like inundating my brain with information on the web team and how the whole site runs, and you know, it, so I was. That was a whole bunch of new stuff I was trying to t- take on. Definitely. We're, we're going to get onto the web team stuff real soon. But also, at the same time as you taking over all these new positions, you were um, relatively active over on Tactical Sports as well, rocking it with the Forza guys and the Forza club that we had going live at the time. Yep, there I was uh, I was a member, and I went to my, all my mandatory practices, and uh, yeah, just raced away. I, I stayed very low-key there. <laughs> <laughs> very low-key. I didn't even yep. know you were on there, and I was. I think I was running that division at the time, and I was like, yep. I was like, oh yeah, I know this guy. <laughs> this guy who's just become my DO. <laughs> yep, I made my choice. I had TW or TS, and I chose TW, and the TS was kind of like my, my little escape as a member. Oh, I'm, I not, I'm not stepping up. Don't look at me. <laughs> just racing. <laughs> Oh, I've rolled with it for so long. I love tactical sports and I cannot wait for the day when tactical sports comes back. And it was so hard for me to, to walk away from TS when I had to make that decision as well. But I just, yeah. can't, I can't leave my call of duty guys, man. I was like, I've got to come back there. There's, there's no way I could leave you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. So there we have it. That's, that's your history. That, that was all the way up to the DO position. Um, mm-hmm. We still got a web team to talk about. We've got your core commander position to talk about. We've got so much stuff. We've got questions from you guys coming up. Um, but we're going to cut this video here and let you guys take a little break. We've got lots more coming up, so stay tuned. Um, thank you for your time so far, Stiggs, and we will be back soon.
All right. Talk to you guys soon.